Hi there guys, this is a new video of the Huawei Mate 10, not the Pro, but the Mate 10 and the Chinese version with the model number ALPAL00, I believe. Let's just check. Settings. Yeah, ALPAL00. Now, I just want to talk about a couple of things. I'm not gonna go through the whole phone, but I wrote down a couple of things that might be interesting because of the Chinese model number. So this phone is basically very similar to the Mate 10 Pro, but there are a couple of differences and it's very similar to the international version of the Mate 10, but a couple of pros actually, not cons. So the pros comparing to the Mate 10 international is that it has 6 GB of RAM instead of 4 GB and it has 128 GB internal storage instead of 64 for the International. Now, <clears throat> this is regarding to the Mate 10 International, Mate 10 Chinese. So this is already a win. Then, comparing to the Mate 10 Pro, the cons, they say, is basically the only thing I can point the finger on is that this one doesn't have an AMOLED display but it has an IPS LCD which I don't think is a big deal. Now the pros comparing to the Huawei Mate 10 Pro which I owned for a couple of weeks is one. This supports more network bands. For example this guy is giving me, I don't know if you can see it, it's giving me LTE connection in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, while my international Mate 10 Pro gave me only 4G on Kudo. So I investigated it a bit on the internet and it comes out that this has more bands or antennas than the Mate 10 Pro or the international Mate 10. The other Pro is a larger display uh, and it's because of the aspect ratio. Because it's a, a 16 by 9 instead of a 19 by 9, 18 by 9, so two, 2 to 1. This is the old school and I like that more. The phone is a bit larger and the actual aspect ratio, even, even though it says that that's a, I think the Mate 10 Pro is like a 6 inch, this is 5.9 something, but because of the older aspect ratio, this is actually more real estate. The other pro, in my opinion, is the front mounted fingerprint scanner, the expandable storage which the Mate 10 Pro doesn't have, so this guy has 128 gig just like the Mate 10 Pro, but you can insert a micro SD card as well, up to I don't know how much, but for sure 256 at least, if not more. Then the other one, the aspect ratio, oh this one has an eye, has an eye uh, uh, headphone jack why the Mate 10 Pro doesn't. Air Blaster both, I, I love it. I'm controlling my TVs and stuff with it, which many of the phones doesn't have these days. Then, oh, surprisingly, even though it's an I IPS display, this has a higher resolution than the Mate 10 Pro. The Mate 10 Pro, I think it's only full HD, and this guy is Ultra HD. However, I use it in HD mode because you you can obviously change it to HD full HD and UHD I used in HD because either I'm too old to see the difference but honestly I don't see any difference on the screen and it saves you a lot of battery now in general as a Huawei phones the big pros here are the battery life it's unbeatable six to seven hours on screen time <clears throat> the air blaster the camera, the camera is fantastic. It's a dual camera setup, monochrome, 20 megapixel, and I think it's a 30 megapixel RGB, and uh, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I'm gonna show you a picture. Where is it? If it's on here. So basically with this, or oh, it has an IA, so, no, AI, so 
it recognizes the scenes you shoot, right? But the biggest pro on this, the manual mode, that you can, well, what I play with most, that you can basically toggle all your settings in the camera. And what I like to do, I, I, I don't find it on my phone now, but <clears throat> what I like to do, I put it on like a 30 second exposure in the middle of the night, I put it down somewhere or put it on a tripod. And you can take amazing pictures of the skyline, of the city, of a lake or the stars. You can actually see more stars that you can actually see with the naked eye. So it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Then it has this uh, bouquet effect for portrait mode that works really well. But that's more like gimmicky. I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not enjoying that that much. But the night when you can play with the shutter speed, it's amazing. I love that a lot. Now, this is again, this, the model is ALP AL00, and I read on the internet before I bought this uh, bad boy that it's uh, concerns regarding the software, the Chinese bloatware, and so on and so on. So I'm gonna tell you quickly my experience on this video was gonna end there. So basically when you take this phone out of the box, you go through your initial setup and it gives you straight away English as a language choice. So you set up in English and then you realize that you don't have any Google apps on this. So what you do, you hit the browser and you obviously put in download, Play Store APK. It comes up really quick. Then you hit download and then it brings up the Chinese slash English keyboard that you're not really sure how to use it's a bit confusing but after two minutes of trying i i found the button saying download i downloaded the apk and once you're there you win because uh, then again you have to play another two minutes to go back to the regular english keyboard and you can just download gboard or i use swift key myself and uh, once that's there you just change it in the settings and you're good to go you don't see any more chinese bloater during your setup. Once your keyboard is on, you're good. So I downloaded all the Google apps I use. Maps, Gmail, Chrome, Google Play Music, YouTube, everything works fine. The only, oh, and then once you're done with that, you obviously, I always remove all the bloats, right? It has a lot of Chinese apps on it, like Weibo, I think that's the Chinese Facebook and stuff like that. So what I do, I. <clears throat> and surprisingly, this guy lets you to uninstall all the Chinese apps you don't want. Most of the Huawei apps you don't want. The only one you can uninstall is the Huawei Play Store, basically, but you can hide it. You can disable it either, that one. But any any other, <clears throat> it can be, can be fully removed from the phone, so you don't need to root it whatsoever. And then... Oh, then you have, when you would swipe to the to the left page, there would come up a thing called Highboard, which is like, a, it's like Google's, a Google Launcher's a Google sideboard whatsoever. That's gonna be full of English slash Chinese content, but it's an easy fix. You just long press your home, then this comes up. And then there's a high board settings and you just turn it off, you never see it again. Other than that, this phone has no Chinese anything on it whatsoever. And this is the 22nd of May and I just got today an update. So I, since I bought it, I got it like for a week and I got already two updates for the UI. It's still on Oreo 8.0 zero but it's a second update i don't know what does it fix but other than that everything's fine it works super smooth yeah uh, everybody yeah, a lot of people say it's, it's a con i for example i hate you always black with like a, a cheesy blue signs here that's an easy fix because you just have a you have your official team app on huawei that's not gonna do much because it's all official teams doesn't change the notification panel or the or your icons. These are the <clears throat> Huawei official ones, but then you can download an app, this one here. 
Where is it? Here. Huawei Thames from uh, the Play Store. And all of these guys, any of this, it's like hundreds. <clears throat> they change your notification panel and your icons as well. And as you see, this looks like pretty close to stock Android now. I love this one. And then when your notifications comes up, they look the same style. So that's cool. And it changes your home buttons as well. Oh, by the way, you can get rid of these. You can either go with gestures or your touch screen. So long press back home. Actually, yeah, long press back home, short, short tap, just the back one. And then if you slide, it brings up the app history or you can have like a floating dot that does the same. Now, oh, and not to mention another pro that because it's Chinese version and people doesn't know what Chinese version is, it's slightly cheaper. So I paid 700 for this. Amazing build quality. The battery is stunning, stunning. And the camera, I'm a amateur, not a good one, but an amateur photographer as well. And I love the camera. It's amazing. And then I leave home usually at 10, 30 a.m. And I come home around 10, 11 p.m. And I'm still like on 40%. And I'm streaming radio all day. I'm listening to e-books. I'm using the navigation all day. Sometimes I'm downloading stuff, streaming YouTube. And it's just, you can't kill this bad boy. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a wonderful day. And hope I'm gonna have something interesting soon and post another video. Bye bye.